My name is Craig Ross, and today we're going to talk about a passion of mine, e-commerce. Specifically, how e-commerce orders get pushed from Nextjournal to Salesforce.com. My intent over the next few minutes is to provide a nice overview of how our integration works. We've had tremendous response to our Salesforce app, and I hope that by the time I'm done, you see why. First question you may be wondering is, why do I want to integrate my e-commerce system with Salesforce.com? What are the benefits? Let me answer that question with a few examples. Maybe you run a winery. We have a client who uses Salesforce to maintain a complete picture of their customer's entire behavior. You name it, tasting room visits, dinners with the winemaker, outbound calls they place to customers to remote events, inbound calls with questions, tasting room purchases, and with our integration, e-commerce purchases. The winery can see every interaction in Salesforce and market to their customers accordingly. Maybe you run a nonprofit. Wouldn't it be great to be able to sell merchandise, sell memberships, and take donations all in one store and have that data flow to the Salesforce system that you're probably already using to manage your members? Now it's really simple. Or maybe you run or work for a traditional merchant or sales organization. You can sell business to consumer, business to business, or both. Having integration with Salesforce provides many benefits, and one client that I work with provides a great example. In addition to using Salesforce to provide customer service, their outside sales reps now get credit for any order that their customers place on the merchant's website. It was much harder for them to track these sales before. Now it is simple and integrated. Since these reps are commission-based, they love that their customers' orders are automatically accounted for, and management's thrilled since it's easy for them to see which reps are performing well and to compensate them for it. It's also worth mentioning that Salesforce has done a brilliant job of turning their system into a robust platform. This provides many new integration opportunities with literally hundreds of systems. For example, maybe you want to use Vertical Response to run email marketing campaigns. Within Salesforce, you'll now have a unified marketing list that has a full accounting of all your customers' behavior, so now this is simple and it's an integrated process. Before I show you how our integration works, let's spend a minute to discuss how order data is pushed from an external to Salesforce. At this point, it's probably helpful to define some terms. If you're not familiar with Salesforce, they really rely on the term objects. So you can see in this diagram how data from Nextjournal flows to the appropriate Salesforce objects. Order data from Nextjournal goes to a Salesforce opportunity object as a closed one opportunity. Now within order data, that's things like um, how much is the order for, where is it being shipped, how is it being paid for. The line item data from that order gets pushed over to that opportunity as well as, line, as a line items on the closed one opportunity. So for example, what items did the customer purchase? Customer data associated with that order goes to two separate objects within Salesforce, both the account object and the contact object. If you're not familiar with Salesforce, you might be wondering, well, why are there, why are there two? Uh, for example, if I, Craig Ross, place an order, I'll be the contact but maybe I'm placing the order for on behalf of Nextjournal. The items are being shipped to Nextjournal. Um, in that case, Nextjournal is the account of which I belong to. And if my other colleagues place orders as well, we all belong to that Nextjournal account object, yet each of us is a separate contact object. Product data from Nextjournal gets pushed automatically to the Salesforce product object. Now you might be thinking, well, what's the difference between product data and the line item data? The line item data lives on the opportunity itself. So these are the products associated with the order. These are what I purchased. Whereas the product data will be a little more detailed. Um, what's the SKU number of pro the products I sell? What's the vendor of those products? So basically more complete product um, information. With our integration that gets pushed automatically. Merchants do not need to create products manually within Salesforce. It's also worth noting with our integration that if customer activities are recorded in Nextjournal, those will get pushed up to the contact in Salesforce as well. So for example, I log a phone order in Nextjournal. And this can be beneficial because maybe not all of your employees have access to your company's Salesforce account, but um, they can log into Nextjournal and uh, perform tasks within there. So let's take a look at how this works. On our website, if we click on our demo sub tab, this can take us to our demos where we can now see this interaction, this integration in action. 
At this point, it's worth mentioning that with Nextjournal, a merchant gets three pieces of software. They have a business to consumer store, which is open to the public. They have a B2B store, which is password protected. And they have a very powerful backend called the order management system. It's really a complete tool set for them to run, manage, and grow their online business. Now, our merchants all have access to both business to consumer and business to business stores. Some use one or the other, some use both. With our system, the merchant gets to choose which tool is best for their sales needs. We're going to start at our consumer demo. And to demonstrate this, we have a fictitious golf retailer called FirstFairway.com. Should mention at this point that First Fairway is not part of the online store or part of the external system. This is representative of a merchant's website. Merchants typically come to an external and they want to integrate an e-commerce system into the website that they have. This does demonstrate though that it's very simple to take the customer from your website into the store in a variety of fashions. Let's assume I'm here and I really want to buy a shirt, but before I do that, I know I need some accessories as well. Once I go into the accessories category, now I'm in the online store. From this point forward, what we're looking at is an external system, of course, until we get to the Salesforce piece. One thing to point out at this point is that an external system is going to match the merchant's website. So as a customer, I have the shopping experience of going to the merchant's website and shopping at the merchant's website. Let's assume I, this towel looks pretty nice, so we're going to put one in our cart. And I could use some tees while I'm here, so I'll add that to my cart. I now have two products in my cart, and I've done that with only two clicks. As a customer, I never have to click continue shopping, I never have to click view cart, and I never have to click recalculate if I'm going to buy multiple products. Because of that, it's a super clean, super simple shopping experience. Now, if it's an easy shopping experience for me, the customer, I'm more likely to complete my transaction. As I mentioned previously, I'm here to buy a shirt, so we'll go to the apparel category. Specifically, I want to buy this Nike Sphere Dry Polo shirt since I have a coupon. And I'm going to pick a uh, color, maybe more to my liking. And I'm going to pick the appropriate size. And then I'll add that to my cart as well. While I'm here, I should mention that the external system has many social and marketing tools built into it. For example, telefriend functionality, Twitter integration, integration with the Facebook social graph, um, customer reviews, customer questions, merchants can embed product video. All those tools are built right into the system. As I mentioned a moment ago, I have a coupon for this product, so let's redeem it. Piece of our demo. Now that we have our items, we'll check out. And at this point, the merchant's even now offering me um, dynamic upsell opportunities. And you know what? I could always use some more golf balls, so why not? They're on sale. Now that we have our products, we're ready to check out. We're going to log in as a returning customer to save us a moment. The system recognizes me. Brings me to my invoice page. At this point, I can still um, change my shipping, edit my cart, enter my payment info, of course. And I'm going to submit my order. So a super clean, super simple shopping experience for me, the customer. Now that I've submitted my order, I can even share it on Twitter and Facebook if I like. So now that we've submitted our order, we're going to become the merchant in this example and process the order. We want to process the order, therefore we can see how the data flows to salesforce.com. So at this point, we're going to look at the external order management system. Everybody in your organization who have access to the order management system will have their own username and password and the appropriate access level so that you, the merchant, can control who can do and see what. When we log in, the system is going to show us a very powerful dashboard so at a glance I can see what's going on in my store. Sales proce process and progress. Um, activity statistics, customer information, etc. 
dashboard is really, really nice. But let's talk about processing orders for now. In the order section, the system will always put the newest order on top. So for me to process this order, simply click on the order number. And this screen will give me all the information I need. What did this customer purchase? How is it being paid for? Where is it being shipped to? Assuming I'm ready to ship, first thing I want to do is capture the funds. When I click on that dollar sign icon, the system will take me to my credit card terminal, showing me that I've successfully captured the funds. What's really nice in here is that I've got a void button, a refund button, and a few other customer service buttons as well. So if there is a customer service issue, I can deal with it right here. I don't need to log into my gateway provider software or into some other system. Now that I've gotten paid, I'm ready to ship. Bottom of the screen, I can print the packing slip to put in the box. I can print an invoice if necessary. But what I really love is that I can print my shipping labels right from here. So in this case, we're going to show off uh, UPS. Our integration works as well with both FedEx and the Postal Service, and even DHL if you ship internationally. Um, page one is going to ask me if I'm using my default shipping options. I probably always will, but if there's some sort of mistake in the warehouse, I can customize. Page two is going to ask me if I'm going to ship today. If I miss today's cutoff, I could always change the date till tomorrow or to some other future date. And now, at the bottom of my screen, if I click View Print, it'll open up a new tab for me, and it will show me my shipping label. Print this label out, stick it on my package, and my order process is complete. So I'm going to close this window. Back in the order management system, hit Finish. This brings me to the detail screen of this order. This order status is now automatically marked as shipped. The line items are also automatically marked as shipped. Customers automatically had a second email sent to them telling them that the order has been shipped, complete with tracking information. And it's also important to note that our system will put tracking information on the line items, not on the order itself. Therefore, if you have a scenario of not everything fits in one package or some items are back ordered or going to ship independently, um, that is absolutely not a problem with our system. And this will also become important once we get to Salesforce. On our main order screen, two other items to mention. There's a batch process button. So let's assume you have to process a thousand orders today. Instead of looking at each order individually, like we just did for this demo, you can batch process and literally do them all in just a few minutes. And the other important tool is that I can put new orders in the system. For example, phone orders. So if you call USA Today looking to buy a back issue, maybe from your last birthday, when you call their 800 number, their phone operators are looking exactly at the screen and this is how they take those orders. So really simple to have all of your orders in one place and then to have all that information flow to salesforce.com. Now that this order is shipped, let's go look at what this looks like in Salesforce. So within Salesforce, once a merchant installs the an external e-commerce connector that they get from the App Exchange, they'll have an external tab at the top. After that, they simply supply their connection credentials and uh, they can then they're all set. For the purposes of our demo, we're going to update this now so we can see the order that we just placed flow into Salesforce. Merchants in the in the real world, if you will, will enable automatic updates so that that order data from the external flows to Salesforce automatically every hour. Now that our update's complete, let's go to our opportunities and start there. So we're going to look at the opportunity from the order that we just placed and then how the other items like the accounts, contacts, and products are tied to it. So 102.612, again, is the order we just placed. And here I can see the amount of the order. I can see it was paid by credit card. It's a closed one opportunity. I can see the items associated with the order. This is what the customer purchased. And I can see um, the contact associated with it. So again, all that information is here on the opportunity level. Now, maybe I want to learn more about Josh Ross, the person buying this product and placing this order. If I click on his name, that would bring me to the Josh Ross contact detail screen. So here's where I can see things like his mailing address, of course, phone number information, email address, etc. And I can see all the orders that he's placed. 
So I can see he's a pretty good customer. He's been uh, fairly busy with us. The other thing I can see of interest is that earlier today, we, he had a call. So let's look at that. So I can see that Josh had a, an account with, had a call with one of my reps, and in this case, Craig Ross, and he called in and had questions about the fit of this particular shirt. Um, in this case, Craig's recognized that he's a great customer, so he gave him a coupon because he thought that that was going to tip him and push him to complete this transaction. So if we go back to Josh Ross, we can then see that that order it did was indeed placed and it did indeed have that shirt on it and not only did it have that shirt but it also had the other items as well um, those accessories and uh, those golf balls so in this case a merchant can see very clearly that that one conversation with the phone rep turned into a very nice order um, and that by using that coupon it was a very effective tool the other thing that we can see now that we're back to this opportunity is the account that it's associated with, in this case, an external. So within the external account, I actually have two contacts, Josh and Mike Smith. Now I could see from the order history before that Josh is, is a bit more active than Mike is. So now as a merchant, that's important information to me. Maybe I want to reach out to Mike, hey, your colleague Josh is doing a lot of ordering with us. Um, how can we entice you to behave just like Josh does? So again, just a wonderful tool for the merchant to really understand what their customers are doing. Let's go back to Josh's opportunity, his closed one opportunity, because there's one other thing that we want to look at, and those are the products associated with it. As mentioned before, not only will the products live here, but their tracking information as well. And as mentioned, we will put the tracking information on the line description for each product. Therefore, if um, they happen to have multiple tracking numbers on a single order, we can account for that very, very simply. The final piece to look at in Salesforce are the products themselves. So while we can see the products associated with an opportunity, the product section is where our product data will live. For example, looking at these Access Pro Slim Ts, we can see information such as the product code, um, the vendor, um, the category, etc. So that information all lives here. And once again, a merchant doesn't need to manually create these products in Salesforce. By using our integration, that data will flow automatically. So a common question at this point might be, well, how do I get the Salesforce app and how much does it cost? Very simple, if you go to salesforce.com, and put your mouse over products in their top navigation. They'll have a link for the App Exchange. Within the App Exchange, simply type in external. And our e-commerce connector will be the first listing. By clicking on it, you can download and install the Commerce Connector in your Salesforce account for free.